this application gives us a chance to uh, work with the negative binomial a little more, get a little more comfortable with it. Um, remember, the negative binomial can be thought of as uh, like a generalization of the geometric, which is kind of confusing because negative binomial makes it sound like it would be the extension of uh, the binomial distribution, just like the hypergeometric. It sounds like the hypergeometric is an extension of the geometric, so it's, I think it's a little bit confusing. Um, but the, essentially, with the geometric, we're counting the amount of time until we have a failure. So we have a bunch of trials, they're independent, they all have the same probability of success, um, or we're counting the number of time until we have a failure, probability P of success. Negative binomial, we're counting uh, the amount of time until we have R successes. Uh, so we still have this value P, uh, where P is the probability of success on each independent trial, and now we're just waiting for R successes. So I'm going to put number of draws up to 1,000. Again, as I mentioned in other videos, we can just um, move this down to 10 or up, you know, up to 1,000 just to sort of see more variance, to, like the sampling difference um, when we draw from this, this distribution, this random variable. But I think it's um, fine. to it's, it's good first just to have it at 1,000 to see a nice uh, extensive plot. So here, in this example, we're saying the number of failures until we have five successes where the probability of success on each trial is, is one half. Okay, so it makes sense that this is kind of around five-ish, right? Because if we're 50-50, um, then we should kind of see five failures before we see five successes since it's, you know, 50-50. If we increase P, what do we think is going to happen? If we have a higher probability of success, then we should, we're probably going to see less failures, right? We should see this x-axis get smaller because we're more likely to have a success each time. So let's see increasing p to 0.91. And yeah, you can see like here we only have usually a couple, either, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, and rarely we have four failures before we get the five successes. Whereas if we dec decrease p, so if we send p down to 0.11, you know, one, one, um, now we have much higher, we have many more failures, so 40 failure, like 35 failures on average. Um, it looks like maybe a little higher. Yeah, definitely higher because it's a skewed right. Um, but when the point is when P is lower, this distribution moves to the right because we expect more failures, the probability of success is lower. Um, so let's go back to a constant uh, or to a, like a nice neutral one half and let's imagine playing with R. So if we, if we move R all the way to one, now you should see that this is just a geometric distribution, right? When R equals one, this is just a geometric distribution. The number of failures until we get a first success. In this case, it makes sense that it's about one, right? Because, you know, one, one half probability, kind of one and one symmetry. And as we increase R, we should see it shifting to the right. Uh, again, because, you know, we, we have to see more successes, so it's going to take longer. We're going to see more failures. We can, the largest we can get this, like, right, let's see if, if we want the lar largest possible value. We send P all the way, the lowest it can be, and we have, we want to see a lot of uh, successes. So if we have really low probability P, of success each time and we want to see a lot of successes, then we're going to see a lot of failures, right? We're going to see thousands, in some cases we're going to see thousands of failures uh, before we see a success. And if we want P to be really small, we just say probability and actually this, um, we'll, okay, let's talk about this. So if we set P to equal one, right, and we want to see 10 successes, we're always going to see zero failures because probability one means that we'll always, always have success. So anytime P is one, no matter what R is, we're still going to get uh, the zero here. A little more interesting case is if we have p equal 0.99 and we're waiting for sort of just one, uh, one success. Overwhelming majority of the time, 99%, you know, 99% of the time, we're just going to have a success right away. There's only a few times that we actually see a failure before success. So in this case, I'm just, you know, trying to max out um, my, my random variable, you know, when P is small, R is large, and then we can think about when P is really large and R is really small, it's a really small value. So, uh, just intuition on the negative binomial, again, you know, you can adjust these draws to start, sort of see how, like, you have sampling variability if you have these low draws and you're, you know, you click go and you do a bunch of samples, you can see how it's very different because we have a small sample size where if we have a sample size of a thousand, the differences are not as extreme. Uh, so hopefully that helps you with your intuition on the negative binomial.